guys, well, here I am back at the house. It's been a long day. We had the party. Drop off the kids. We had to deal with the dog. I had to pack. All ready to go. I just packed the last final few little things, just minor, but I was pretty much packed from a while ago. Time to deal with the tank, last minute kind of stuff. You Time to deal with the tank, last minute kind of stuff. Nighttime hours right now. I think it's like 11.30, close to 12 o'clock. Lights are off on the tank. Lights are off on the tank. Lights are off on the tank. A few things that I wanted to point out that I might be, that I am sort of uh, concerned about about are the, the evaporated water of the aquarium. The tank is going to be evaporating water like normal and my reservoir for my auto top off holds maybe call it 10 gallons give or take. Holds maybe colds maybe colds maybe colds maybe colds maybe colds maybe colds maybe colds. So that will last me to approximately maybe Thursday, Friday. Important to do the math to see how long this reservoir for my auto top off will actually last. And that's one main uh, important thing that I wanted to definitely uh, look after so when I leave that I know that it's okay. So what I've done to make sure that it is okay when I leave, parents and my uh, mother-in-law and father-in-law they're going to be here for feeding the fish for me everything's doing okay i just need them to do one thing check my auto top off reservoir and if it is empty which i'm assuming by thursday it's going to be empty they are supposed to plug in my ro unit that's going to top up my uh, auto top off reservoir that's going to make sure that my tank is topped up and there all the evaporated water is full and where it needs to be my ro unit run for a couple hours until it's full they're going to keep me posted and keep in touch I'm going to leave the food out for them to feed. Um, for them to know how much to feed is also very important because usually when you have someone watching the dealing with the tank, it's, it's quite common for them to overfeed or not feed enough. I'm going to leave out a portion of food of what I would normally feed in a day. We'll be able to get that same amount, the same amount of portion of food and give it to the fish. Another thing that I wanted to point out to them and you guys as well is how you're going to feed. Well, yeah, well, you think you just put the fish or the pellets or whatever the fish food inside the aquarium, but with my tank and I'm sure maybe even some of your tanks or just even in general from my experiences, um, I don't usually just put the food right on top of the, of the water because then that way it would just get skimmed and go inside my overflow boxes because that's pretty much what the overflow boxes are meant to do if the food is not like a sinking uh, type of food. So pretty simple, all you gotta do is just get the food and actually just put your hand inside the water, literally just an inch, a half inch, as long as you just literally submerge the food into the water. I'm gonna get them to check the auto top off reservoir. I'm gonna get them to feed the fish for me. Um, just let me know how the skimmer looks. I showed them the skimmer. They're gonna let me know, you know, if it's for whatever reason accumulated so much. For, you know, maybe the skimmer collection cap will be super full. So I showed them also how to remove that skimmer collection cap. That's a very important thing, and which is very pretty straightforward and easy. You just pull off the collection cap. The sink is right behind you. Just turn on the sink, give it a nice rinse, pour out all the garbage, you know, waste water proteins that are the, the protein skimmer collected and just literally push it back on the collection cap. You don't even need to turn off the skimmer as I don't recommend turning off the skimmer anyways. There's no need to turn it off. Just pull off the collection cap, give it a rinse, put it back on. With saying that, that just reminds me, I have a protein skimmer that's brand new that just hit the market patent design that I've been showing you guys in my unboxing videos. I'm not sure if you guys watched it or not, but this skimmer I'm going to be opening once I get back from my trip. I'm still thinking about it. I can't wait to share you guys the name of the skimmer, how to set it up, how it works, all that other jazz, the patent design, where to buy it, everything. It's it's so cool. I'm pretty actually excited about this skimmer because I want to set it up. Um, this is a brand new skimmer. It's not even the one that's in my tank right now. The one in my tank is working great. I have just found this new skimmer online. I'm not going to even tell you guys the name. Um, and I'm basically gonna set it up give it a review try it out in my reef tank and hope for all the best and I can't wait to start using the skimmer and seeing how it works anyways here's my drill here's my quarter inch spade bit I gotta be drilling um, my return line over here if you guys remember been sticking with me my return pump stopped working do you guys remember that yes or no wave your hands or whatever put your hand up leave a comment do you remember my return pump my jubble return pump stopped working it was about maybe even three weeks ago stopped working it was a submergible pump i took it out i got some tubing and i got some uh, flex holes and whatever fittings i need an extra return pump it was an external return pump good thing my sump uh, was already um, it has a hole already drilled in it from previously which is an external return pump I plugged in that return pump, everything's working, everything's top notch. 
but again, one thing that I did not do, and I've been lucky there hasn't been no power outages, but this is what I'm gonna do before I leave. I'm gonna drill this quarter inch, um, call it a siphon breaker hole in my return line. And you'll notice it's gonna be very hard to see here because it's dark. I'm gonna probably turn off this camera, flip it around and put the flash on so you can see. But my return line, for an example, comes down this low in my tank. So if the power shuts off, it's gonna drain off this much water in my display tank, which is no good because I'm assuming, and we're gonna test it, uh, just to make sure that when the power is off my sump return or my sump sump tank can hold that backflow um, you know of the siphon of the return pump back in there so today what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill this quarter inch or that uh, one inch hose there the fitting I'm going to drill it a little three eighths little hole and where I'm going to place that hole is instead of it being like three inches below the water line, I'm going to place it about a good half inch to one inch below the water line. So that air hole there that I'm going to drill into that return line is going to actually um, stop the hose from siphoning back down to the sump when the power is shut off. So that is very important. I know currently right now when it does shut off, it gets to a pretty much an unsafe level in my sump right now and to be honest this is very super important what I need to do mandatory before I go anywhere I'm not going on no plane no Cancun no nothing until I look after this because if the power goes off there's definitely going to be a little problem water coming back siphoning back inside my sump and it's going to overflow to to my floor and we're gonna have a big problem and I'm, and I'm not gonna be here to solve that issue so we definitely don't want to do that so these are just a few things that I want to share with you guys that if you go away you should definitely have checked out on your tank to make sure that everything is working fantastic and safe so you can leave and everything will be okay so when you are away you can actually enjoy yourself so and safe so you can leave and everything will be okay so when you are away you can actually enjoy yourself so with that being said, I also wanted, I noticed that the glass is a little bit dirty. I'm going to give the glass a little clean with this magnet scraper. This is a coral box glass cleaner. It's been working fantastic for me. It's like the standard mag float. Um, but at the same time, it has a nice built in scraper, metal scraper in there. So again, that scraper has been working good. I'm going to give the glass a nice little clean right there. Uh, I did a water change the other day about maybe uh, 15 to 20 gallons. As I did that water change, I also noticed that I kind of buried some of these corals with the sand a little bit, some of the ones that were on the sand bed, but I noticed the next day that they kind of uh, re-exposed themselves. So everything's doing good, everything's okay, just like normal. I looked at the tank, everything's all right. So I think that's it, man. I'm just gonna put aside some food. I got the plug all ready to go for my uh, parents to plug in to the wall for the RO unit. So when on Thursday comes, they can just plug in the RO unit and top off the auto top off. Feed the fish. Let me know about how the skimmer is looking. Also the temperature of the tank. I showed them where the thermometer is and that's it. They're pretty familiar with the, my tank and how it pretty much works as you know when they do come over my family I show them it and you know just kind of teach them a little about it at, at the same time. So I guess that's pretty much it guys. It's uh, I'm going to deal with this quick little things here with the tank right now. We're going to basically crash, catch some Z's. We're going to be up early in the morning give or take like five o'clock and we're gonna head off to the airport. You guys are gonna come with me, go through all that whole situation of the airport situation, go on the plane, all that. We're going to Cancun, baby. Stay tuned with us, Leo Pazzo TV. Come along with us, don't forget to subscribe, you know what it is. Thanks for watching.